Okay, welcome everyone to uh, this continuation of, of, on, uh, of my what is series. Today, what is the Jordan normal form again? Or rather how to compute the Jordan normal form. So it's, it's a really important concept. Um, it's, it's kind of, well, it, it is what it is, right? It says, it, it says what it is. It is a normal form of a matrix. So you can always bring any kind of reasonable matrix in the Jordan form. And you can kind of compare it and play some games with it. Um, but it turns out it's a little bit tricky to compute. So this is really painful sometimes, um, in particular in, in ugly examples. So, so in most cases, it's actually quite, pretty okay. And I will explain that as well. But in general, it's a little bit painful. There are a little bit much of counterexamples. For almost all my matrices, you're fine. But in general, it's ugh. So the only point I want to make is I want to show you basically how it works. And you should try to do it yourself several times for bigger matrices. And at one point, it's an algorithm. At one point, you just say, OK, it's an algorithm. It's maybe not made for human minds, but for a computer, it's breakfast. So as soon as you understand um, the concept of calculating those matrices, and have done several examples, I would really recommend to use a, a computer algebra program, like whatever you prefer as a computer algebra program. Any, any computer algebra program can do it. It's usually breakfast, um, in particular, if you're only interested in numerical solutions, then, then it's kind of okay. Okay, let me just start right into it. And let's analyze those Jordan blocks. So remember, a Jordan block was basically you had some, some lambdas on the diagonal and the lambdas are always my eigenvalues. And you had some ones on the off diagonal and everything else was zero. That was a Jordan block. It was kind of the minimal, uh, the minimal building block of the Jordan normal form. And you, you weren't able to reduce it any further. So we will see this again here. So, um, so let's start with this Jordan block. Eigenvalue is lambda. And it's not quite a Jordan block. It has this one here. Uh, but it kind of has the same properties as a Jordan block. The only eigenvector of this matrix is, is a one, zero, zero, zero. So you can't do anything. You, you, can't, uh, you can't diagonalize it. You only have one eigenvector. So, so what can we do with this matrix? And a little bit of a miraculous calculation is now the following. So let me learn you through it. You kind of observe. So the first thing that that's easy to observe is that it really doesn't matter what lambda is. Even if you put zeros on the diagonal, it, it still has exactly the same eigenvector. So why not make your life easier in considering n instead of n, right? So n is the matrix of our choice. It, it just, uh, in this case, it's just an upper triangular matrix with some ones on the off diagonals. On the off diagonal, or on, the, on, on, on the part be, be beyond the, the, the main diagonal. And yeah, so what can you do with such a matrix? Such a matrix is called nilpotent because the following thing happens. So nilpotent means if you, and that's really unfamiliar if you only know numbers. So matrices has this funny property, if, some of them at least. If you take certain powers, you will hit the zero matrix. Take a power, take a power, take a power, you will hit the zero matrix could happen. And those matrices are called nilpotent. And these, these upper triangular matrices, these strictly upper triangular matrices with zeros on the diagonal, they are nilpotent. So you can take the, well, the first power, no, well, the first power is this one. The second power is a green one. And the third power is already zero. And what happens is this funny fact that as soon as you take those powers, you, you get new eigenvectors. So you have a new eigenvector, and they call it an eigenvector in quotation marks, um, which is now the eigenvector 0, 1, 0. It's not an eigenvector of m, but it's an eigenvector, it's not an eigenvector of n or m, but it's an eigenvector of n squared. And if you cube it, then you get a new eigenvector, which wasn't an eigenvector of anything before. Well, it's a zero matrix. A zero matrix has quite a lot of eigenvectors, nearly everything. So you, you get this new um, you get this new eigenvector. Um, and the observation you do is here, well, I already said this, this calculation does not depend on lambda, 
but it also doesn't depend on this on this purple entry here right it, it really doesn't matter at all the purple entry already vanishes in the first step and here it's already gone it goes goes away so, so why not take the purple entry to be zero and then you get what is called a draw so the same calculation works for kind of any kind of row and walk. You observe that if you take successive, basically powers of the drawdown block, then you get new eigenvectors. Okay. Let me do an example. So if you see some matrix, some really explicit example, if you see some matrix coming up like this one, and it looks a bit ugly, but you know, a random matrix looks a bit ugly. This is not a random matrix, of course, I've, I've chosen it, but, um, Random matrices look a little, little bit ugly. So how do you go? How do you go ahead try to find the Jordan of form? Well, the first step you do is you just calculate the characteristic polynomial, and here you go. This is not well. So it's four by four matrix. If you would have four different eigenvector values, so the eigenvector values are of course now one, two, and three, which should tell you it's not a random matrix. I've chosen this, um, but anyway, <laughs> if you do this. Uh, you see, you're almost almost good. If you would have four different eigenvalues for a four by four matrix, you could immediately diagonalize it. So the next step, and then you would be done. You don't even need to calculate. So if you would have four different ones, you don't even need to calculate the base change matrix. You would know that uh, the Jordan normal form would be lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and lambda four in some order on the diagonal. But this is certainly not the case here. So you have to go one step further. The, 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 well, you need to calculate eigenvectors now. And this is not so hard. For lambda 1, you get this one. For lambda 2, you get this one. And for lambda 3, you get this one. And this is really a bummer now. Because if you would have, so, so the multiplicity of 3 is the only thing that matters here. In some sense, it's 2. So what you would like to get are two eigenvectors for 3. But you only get one. If you would get two, you again would be done, and this would be the solution. But you only get one. And this is what people usually call the algebraic versus the geometric multiplicity, whatever. Um, the point is, let me say it in, in, in other words, you always want as many eigenvectors as you see powers turning up here. So this power is just one, so one eigenvector is OK. Maybe I should do it in a different color. Um, so. Here you go. So this power is one. So one is okay. Um, this power is one. So one. So this one checks. This one checks. And this power is two. So you want two here. One missing, right? One is missing. Hmm. Okay. But. but we can do something, let's try something. So we can still form a change of base matrix by just putting the eigenvectors uh, uh, along the, what is it, along the columns. So this, the, the red one is in the first column, uh, the green one is in the second column, and the blue one is in the third column. And sadly, you don't have a fourth one, otherwise you would have a, a, a nice, um, a nice change of base matrix. So you kind of fill in a random lump, other one for now, which is linear independent such that P is invertible. And you do this calculation and you see, oh, ooh, we're almost there. Look at it. So here's your first Jordan block is trivial. Here's your second Jordan block is trivial. This is a wannabe Jordan block. And then you have this, this funny um, off diagonal entry here, which is a bit of a pity. So you're almost there. That's the whole point. Just doing this naively. Let, let me say it again. Uh, characteristic polynomial, calculate it. If you have as many roots as the size of your matrix, good. You're diagonalizable. If not, calculate eigenvectors. If you have as many eigenvectors as the size of your matrix, linear independent eigenvectors, then you're good to go. It's diagonalizable. Otherwise, um, you need to play it. You need to be a bit careful. So for instance, you play this game and you realize, oops, this, this only almost brings me there. The only thing which was kind of random was this last entry, which, uh, which, which we filled in. It's, there should be a choice, right? And I just choose it. So that's why I get some uh, 
and matrix this is almost good. Okay, um, and this is really where the kernel comes into. So what you really should do is the following. So first of all, you should get rid of, of the corresponding eigenvalue. So you just consider the matrix where this is what's the eigenvalue, the crucial one, the one that appears with multiplicity three. So this matrix, uh, the same trick as we just use for the Jordan block. Well, that's what you get. And you square it as for the Jordan blocks, and you get another matrix, whatever it is. And you, you find, oh, it has a new eigenvector in the kernel. This matrix has a new eigenvector. This is not an eigenvector, so not an eigenvector of M. It's only an eigenvector of, of, of uh, basically M squared, if you want. And then you do the, maybe what we have seen from Jordan blocks is actually already correct. And you, instead of putting my random vector here, I put this new eigenvector in, in my base change matrix. And you do the calculation and woo, here you go, it works. That's a miracle, isn't it? You just copy what you have seen from the Jordan block uh, and from diagonalization and you fill in those, those extra eigenvectors for those, those funny powers of, of the matrix, basically, or of the matrix minus uh, lambda times the identity. And it gets you where you want to go. And this is kind of the whole concept um, of calculating calculating the Jordan form. That's the whole point. Here's the formal definition. So what you would need to do is you would need to find the things that are called Jordan chains. Um, and in, in, this, in this definition, so you successively uh, take powers of, of M minus lambda, and you call those things that are called eigenvectors in quotation marks, you call them generalized eigenvectors of the corresponding rank, so of rank M. And you want a chain of them such that you, you can get from, uh, from the Mst one to, to all the others, basically. And you want this chain to be maximal. That, that's, that's exactly what I did here on this slide. That's all there is. Um, this is really painful to compute for a computer. It's easy, but that's basically what you do. So let me run you through it again um, with the final example. Um, well, almost. So you really need to find those Jordan chains. And, and in this case, well, maybe you should try to pause the video, do the example yourself. Here's the matrix. This was a really bad one. Here's the matrix. And these three vectors form a Jordan chain. So this is kind of it, 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 it doesn't matter. This is this is this is a vector itself. So the Jordan block in this case, uh, the Jordan normal form in this case, by the way, is this one with a two by two block here and a one by one block here. And this one gives you the one by one block here. So there's no condition on being a chain if you just have one element. And those two vectors give you the two by two block here. And the philosophy is, and in this case, you it's again, you calculate the eigenvectors, the eigenvalues, all eigenvalues are one in this case, you have two eigenvectors, and you try to find this Jordan chain by, by looking at successive powers of, uh, of, uh, of the matrix minus one minus a lambda times identity, minus one times identity in this case. So do this example, it's really illustrating. And if you have done enough examples, that's my whole point, then you know basically how it works. It's a bit painful to compute for almost all matrices. You are happy you can diagonalize them anyway. And in general, you would, at least I would ask a computer to do it. I know how to compute it. And that's all I want to know about it for now. And then I would ask. Thank you very much for your attention.